It is Ryan Kevin Uncensored. The Book of Clarence is a movie we went to see last night. Ray, how'd you how'd you feel about it? Before loved we introduce it. our guest. Loved it. Got a few questions, but I yeah. loved it. Wicked. Director James Samuel and uh, Lakeith Stanfield. It comes out January 12th. And we're very excited to have you guys on the show. Thanks for coming on, man. Thank you so much for having Thank us. You. Thank you. All right. So uh, I I need you to clear let's clear this up. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? You came on, you did you guys did the the interview at first. You came on greeting. Peace to the gods. Peace to the GOD. All right. So Clarence and and he was supposed to be the thirteenth <laughs> disciple. Now, but before you stop right there. He's really thought about this. I really thought about this. So be this. ready for this. Okay. So and I'm thinking, okay, they're not talking about Jesus per se. It's in it's something that's going on at the same time. Clarence who is Clarence Thirteen X, the 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 founder of the Five Percent Nation? You know what I'm saying the Five Percent who believed that they was the true and living God, the other eighty five was the dumb, deaf, and blind, and he was trying to tell people, listen, this is not what it is. Please, I I may be way off. Yeah, you know, you, you know, you know what? Like Clarence is is his own guy. Clarence is Clarence is his own guy, but they, you know, one could say that there's um. There's similarities there, but that, that's that wasn't my aim. Clarence, I'm, way, I'm way off. I'm way off. Clarence, just Clarence say I'm just, way off. The you know song I mean? was so good. <laughs> no, 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 no. But Clarence is, you know, Clarence is my own guy. Clarence is his own is his own uh, individual. Now, in the same breath, you know, whatever someone reads into it, there could be some some validity there. You know, right. d- d- it depends what it really means to what it means to so you. So we're not confirming or denying anything. <laughs> That's that's the end. Uh, that's yeah, the that, end of all. That's the sound bite right there, Lakeith. Just y'all keep thinking about it. I think uh, I think you own to something. Actually. Thank you. You know, I was exactly. thinking the same thing. So thank you. Yeah. yeah. Peace to the gods, yo. Peace to the GODs. Yeah. Lakeith playing, you know, two roles. Um, was that something that you ever thought you'd do in your film career? No, no, I could have never anticipated it. Saw it coming. Um, and in the, in the capacity it came, I was just really thrown off. I mean. I believe in James. We did The Harder They Fall together, and I know how brilliant his mind is and his ability to direct is amazing. And just to be a human and create such a beautiful space on set. I mean, we had dance parties. It was just like, it was beautiful out there. We shot in Italy, yeah, and we were in this place that was made out of stones. It was like a Stasi. It felt like Jerusalem. Mm. You put on the robes, you get in the regalia, and it just felt beautifully and black and powerful. And I just loved being there. It was a dream. But I, I didn't imagine... I couldn't have prepared for what it would have meant to have played two roles. Um, so when I got there, it was it was an interesting setup. It's technically devised so that I shoot one side of a, of a you know scene, and then I come back and I shoot the other side of the scene. Typically in different days. There was a one there was one time where it was uh, one char- two both characters on the same day. So I would shoot my part of the scene, go into the trailer, change clothes, change everything, get into the other character, and then play against myself. Uh, it was quite interesting, man. It was challenging. But beautiful. It was cool because I had to remember every little beat I did in the right. scene so I could act off of it. So it's a technical challenge, but I found it fun. We got more when we come back. It's Ryan Cameron Uncensored. We're back. It's Ryan Cameron Uncensored. We're talking about the book of Clarence, director James Samuel, the Keith Stanfield in the studio with us right now. There's a, there's scenes in there that, I mean, I went home and I downloaded again Nights Over Egypt. Like a G. Because I was like... There's always, you know, when you're watching these movies, and, I, and I, I've watched Lakeith stuff, and there's always something different. I guess my question, Lakeith, is you seem to be in it, but not of it when it comes to your acting career. It, it, it's like what you do, but you're not with all the other stuff, right? How did you describe it, Ray, when we were coming in? Uh, an L.A. dude with some Canadian connections, real eclectic just in thinking. You know what I'm saying? Like, you don't subscribe to all the other BS that goes on out there. You a natural cat. Like, in all honesty, I think you have Andre 3000 on replay somewhere in the crib or the car. Oh, that's my boy. I, 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 uh, I'm listening to the, the new album. I love the it, new by blue the sun, way. Yeah. yeah, I definitely got that on repeat because, like, like you know, he decided to take his own route, and I think that that's a And that's what you thing. do. Yeah, you yeah. got to. You know what I'm saying? It's really, it's really your own route, and when you get a chance to see that clearly and in the moment, an opportunity to act actualize that you better take it mm-hmm. because that's what we fight for every day that's what we've been fighting for our ancestors fought for for us to have choice to have freedom to be able to express the way we can so i feel like we owe it to them and it's a beautiful beautiful gift some people ain't got time to focus on their own ambitions and actualize their goals and some people got to spend time surviving every day people right. like clarence yeah so i want to sp- i want to speak 
truth and life into those characters and also just, you know, take the opportunity to take up the space that I can because that's what my people died for. James, it's not a slight, um, but I will say that, you know, it felt really good to see so many black folks and not be in Wakanda. Yeah. You know, I, because I, I felt like, you know, by the by the time we saw somebody who wasn't black, we was already the, the movie theater was in. We was entrenched in, in all that blackness. Yeah. 100%. Was that deliberate? Uh, 100 percent. You know, you, you know, and with all due respect to, to um, Black Panther, Wakanda was not made or is not a real place and was not created by black people. But, you know, for me, what is awesome about the Book of Clarence is you accept, much like with The Harder They Fall, my first movie, you accept the world you're in immediately. Like, you're there, you're with these people, and you just accept it. Because right. Because we did exist those days. And, you know, the, Rome wasn't a country. Rome was an empire. Right. The expansion of Rome. So when you meet other people, in it and they're Roman, you know, it's just, you know, pretty much how it was. It's, it's, a, it's an accurate depiction of how what Rome was doing back then, right? And their, and their expansive, expansive um, colonization. Right. right. And, you know, I think it's important for us to go to the cinema and watch ourselves in these settings and, and accept it as just, just, you know, it's different different clothing, different people are exactly, exactly the same. It's, it's, you know, it's super, super deliberate. I think um, all too often we're told if we weren't, if, if we look at, Anything that's a period piece, we have to be like slaves or subservient right. in that in that kind of that kind of period, and we're not used to seeing ourselves in other environments. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and it's a, it's a joy to be able to do that. We got more. We come back. It's Ryan Cameron on Center. That's all gangs that thing. <laughs> Y'all should take this with y'all. <laughs> because I have this tish. I'll have this tish when I'm making love. <laughs> Not three minutes. You got three minutes. You got three minutes. She'd be, like, she be like, oh, we going twice? <laughs> <laughs> Let me get some water. This ain't wrong tomato. Man. I don't stick around for reviews. I enjoy myself. January 12th, the Book of Clarence, Lakeith Stanfield, director James Samuel, here on Ryan Cameron Uncensored. The takeaway that you want people to have because i know one of the things about having these interviews so early is trying to, for people to understand what is this movie about really do you think that people are going to be able to understand what you're trying to uh to give them with this cinema absolutely you know for me I, i'm not um i'm like yoda try not do or do not there is no try like this is a story of every man. You'll see yourself in this in this story. It's a man that's an underdog that wants to be somebody. We all can relate to to people telling us we can't do something we right. wanna we wanna do. You know, Clarence is a person that he has huge aspirations. And for me, I, it's important that people know, you know, when they're watching this film and just know within themselves, they're not dreams. Like those aims, intentions, and, and ambitions that we all have aren't dreams. The moment you embrace the word dream, you embrace the word failure. My dream house, my dream car, my dream girl, my dream job. Not dreams. You you can't attain a dream. Show me a person chasing a dream, I'll show you a person that's going to fail. These things mm. are aims, plans, and ambitions, and Clarence has all of these things, and he goes for them, and he reaches them. He finds it's his journey of self-discovery and, and, and redemption. But in the process... He finds himself, and that's what we're all on a mission to do. You know last, I mean? last night you said this, and I, and I guess it's a question for Lakeith. You said to the audience, we were all sitting in there, and you were telling people to embrace your crazy. Obey your crazy. Obey your Obey crazy. Your crazy yeah. right. With your film choices. I mean, when it comes to your, your choices, you know, do you you know obey the fact that somebody said, man, you should do this and you should do that, and you just kind of like, I'm not feeling that, or I want to leave a, a mark of, uh, of something for the culture? Because it seems like you're very intent. I think it's more important the things you say no to, you know, that define your choices. I mean, I think I try to be smart um, and then navigating my career to not pigeonhole myself. But a lot of it is just what speaks to my sensibilities. And for a while early on, I would not I would only audition for roles that I didn't fit the description of mm. because I wanted to challenge myself. Mm. Um, but I also know the unending well of potential that's inside of me. So I know that I can do or be anything. Um, it's not a question. It's a knowing. So, therefore, I have to position myself in a place where I can have access to a multiplicity of options because right. I don't feel limited. And, and and I think 
walking down this route, every time I do it, frees me up a little bit more because I'm able to surpass my potential or whatever threshold I thought it was in and continue to just surprise myself. And I think as an artist, that's what you want to do. You know, you mm-hmm. want to feel invigorated and inspired. You don't want to feel like you're, you know, walking down the same pattern, seeing the same things. And so, yeah, I try to choose with that in mind. I try to be strategic, you know. But every now and again, something will land in my lap that's just automatic, like, oh, this – this felt like it was already there. Like right. It was already on the path set out before me, and there's no question. That's what Clarence felt like, because Clarence's story is my story. And I think Clarence's story is everybody's story who's looking at it objectively and being honest. You don't want to stay where you at if you're living with your mom. You want to get your mom the mansion, and that's what he wanted. And he might not have went about it the right way at first, but eventually became humbled, mature, and was able to bring people up and inspire people. I leave this film feeling inspired. So that's what I want people to feel when they leave. Can I just say, and just so I can feel like I was... About the fifth season of Atlanta and why we didn't get it? No, I'm just kidding. Go ahead. <laughs> you ain't going to give me that. <laughs> Look at Keith's face. <laughs> I just want to say, just to make me feel like I was in the movie, peace be unto you. Yeah. Unto you be peace. Thank, Thank you. you. One time for yeah, that. Yeah, man. We're missing one time That's what we're going to say from now on, man. You know what I mean? What movie have we ever had in 135 years of the moving image where you see black people on chariots? Black people in a gladiator fight. Black people being crucified like they were. We're still being crucified. What movie like this have we ever had in 135 years? You deserve to have this on a big screen just as a people. Just as a people in general all across the world. We deserve to have an accurate depiction of what the world looks like. Like what what our environment looks like on a, on a, on a bigger scale. And we deserve to, to, you know, this is a movie we deserve to to have. I don't know why Hollywood stopped making those biblical um epics but in the words of killer mike when speaking to joe rogan you know we were there bro yeah we deserve Facts. this movie i love what you say about deserving because i feel like a lot of us we don't even know how much we deserve we don't even know how much of our story deserves to be told there are depictions of brotherhood two black men together in this story uh riding and doing life together there's black love, dark mm-hmm. skin, black love being yeah. depicted. One time here. for that. That's One really important. That. Biblical chocolate. And the fact that black people can and will stick together. There's yeah. a there's a scene that sticks out where it's like the oppressor trying to come through and the black man says, Look, I know we got something going on, right. but for sake of our blackness, I'm gonna stand in solidarity with you. Exactly. These are the kinds of images that we need to see. They need to be promoted, they need to be held up. That's why I'm so glad this film is coming out. And y'all go see that because you gotta support these kind of films so we can continue to make them. Mm-hmm. Go see it. Even if you think it's like, oh, I don't know how it's gonna feel, I promise you, you will leave the film with a different viewpoint than you have going into it. So go see it. Now I saw, you know, a Sean Carter name in there. Yeah. How, what was that role? What was that? How did that play into to getting this made? Uh, just like with the harder they fall, you know, uh, Jay Z is my producing partner, and you know our our relationship, our creative relationship, is much more expansive than just music, right? You know, what I mean, when we were, when I was like structuring the story of Clarence, he was intimately involved, still intimately involved. When you know, I compose all the, the whole score, yeah, and I write and produce all the songs on the soundtrack, and I perform them as well. And but Jay is like my right hand there and you know we're always we're like partners in crime when it comes to um this film space yeah i thought um one of the things that you know watching the crowd react to something that scene again i keep going back to it i you know people clap at the end even though they knew you were in there but after the whole nice over egypt thing people applauded yeah exactly yeah, they, did. they were so they were energized exactly. by that was that was that intentional exactly yeah, of course they were energized by it like like i want people to not firstly they go to the kind of club kind of place in in the movie because why not? Right. They did. Yeah. Like, they did. And also, you know, these songs that are classics to us. We Man. hear them our whole lives and we listen to these joints, but we never, never really seen break them. down the words. Yeah. And Nights Over Egypt is a so biblical dope, banger. So There's crazy. a star in the east over pyramids <laughs> at Giza. He was a king. She was a queen. And now you're actually watching the king and queen. The pyramids of this, the ancient Jerusalem. We deserve this movie. Tell me we don't. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm James Samuel. The world just looks different now. <laughs> One time.